Hello everyone, my name is Ali Babikir. I'm a clinical teaching fellow of vascular surgery in one of the hospitals here in London. Today I'm going to show you how can you do a vascular examination. Firstly, we're going to start with the general examination. I divided it into A and B. For A, it's a, just the general look of the patient. Check if your patient is comfortable at rest. Uh, are the legs are hanging below the level of the bed usually this uh, most of the patient that hangs their legs below the level of the bed they have peripheral vascular disease and they do that to increase the blood flow to the lower legs is your patient conscious and cooperative oriented to time place and person or not and the build of the patient 1b you just check for bickel b for pala i for ictus or jaundice C for cyanosis and the next C for clubbing K for clonicia which is one of the nail deformities L for lymphadenopathy and E for edema after that you check the related systems I hope you are following one is general examination one A basal look and then one B and now we are in two related systems 2A, the first related system is cardiovascular system. Just check the heart rate and the rhythm, the heart sounds, S1 and S2. Check for any additional sounds like merma, rub and gallop. Check for any disorder causing any embolism, dislodgement as a complication. For example, mitral stenosis patient will have S loud S1 and usually they will have uh, dilated atrium and atrial fibrillation, which may cause embolus to the lower legs the second system is respiratory system check for normal breath sounds and they are vesicular and bronchial vesicular sounds and bronchial sounds these are the normal breath sounds the abnormal breath sound or the additional sounds include wheeze crepitation crackles and pleural rub the third system is abdominal examination or examination of the abdomen Check for any mass in the abdomen. If you find pulsatile mass around the umbilicus, this is usually abdominal aortic aneurysm. Check for any organomegaly. Examine the belfis. Maybe there is lymph nodes enlargement on that area. The fourth system is a spine and cranium examination. And this to rule out any neurological cause. If there is leg and gluteal claudication, you should take the spine and cranium examination. Why? Because one of the differential diagnoses of gluteal claudication is spinal stenosis. Not every patient in vascular who present with claudication is a vascular problem. It could be neurological problem. And one of the m clinical way to differentiate between a neurological claudication and a vascular claudication is if you ask your patient do you feel better by changing your position for example leaning forward if he feels better this usually is a spinal stenosis it's a neurological problem it's not a vascular claudication due to vascular causes will not improve by changing position after that you will do the local examination firstly in the local examination 3a we're going to start with the inspection in the inspection check for the attitude of the limb Often the patient holds his limp. Check for any deformity, any missing part, which may indicate amputation, any muscle wasting or color changes. We're still in the local inspection. Check for any signs of ischemia slash arterial insufficiency. And this include thin and shiny skin, diminished hair growth, loss of subcutaneous fat, trophic change in nail, pretty nails, minor ulceration in the bridge area like heel, maluli, ball of the foot and tip of the toes. Inspect between the digits. This is very important. Don't forget to inspect between the digits. Local inspection for gangrene. Check for any signs of gangrene. And these signs of gangrene includes pale, bluish, purple, black skin. Check for the site and the extent of the gangrene if you find the this table shows the difference between wet gangrene and dry gangrene. What I want you to remember is in wet gangrene, there is no 
clear line of demarcation. In dry gangrene, there is clear line of demarcation. Wet gangrene usually due to arterial insufficiency plus venous occlusion. Dry gangrene usually just arterial insufficiency. Wet gangrene more prone to sepsis and infection. Dry gangrene has less risk of infection and sepsis. But to an inspection, we have tests that we do in inspection and these are three tests including Perger test number one number two capillary refilling time and number three venous refilling time for Berger test you ask your patient as shown in the picture to elevate his legs and keep be elevated for two minutes if you the leg became bare or the patient complained of uh, numbness or pain this means the test is positive the angle in which the paleness or the patient will complain we call this Berger angle or vascular angle if you find the less than 30 degree which means like if the patient complained or you notice paleness in the leg before you reach a 30 degree angle this means the patient has peripheral arterial disease test number two is venous refilling time the patient usually lying down you will elevate the limbs let the veins be emptied then keep the limb back laid flat on the bed you retain the the limb back to the bed in normal limb refilling of the veins occur within five seconds in ischemic limb refilling will occur more than five seconds and the third test we do in inspection is capillary refilling time elevate the limb from the bed where the ischemic limb becomes pale then make the patient sit down with legs hanging down the bed. Normal limp will be pink as it was elevated. In severe ischemia, it takes 20 to 30 seconds for the bell limp to become pink. And these are the three tests we do in inspection. Then, in inspection for ulcers, number and size of the ulcers, the shape, size, extent, surrounding skin, edge, floor, is there any necrotic ischemic tissue and also we check for the margins three is local examination as we said we discussed a which is an inspection now we will discuss b which is palpation firstly palpation of the limb check for the limb temperature of both limb with dorsal side of the fingers why we do that because there's more cutaneous innervation on the dorsal side start from the feet and assess the whole limb if you find coldness in the limb this may indicate ischemia if you find warmness this may indicate infection or inflammation we're still in the palpation of the limb check for tenderness tenderness along the greater saphenous vein and a small saphenous vein may indicate recent thrombosis check for any crepitus which may indicate gas gangrene check for beating and non beating edema and check for joint movement and usually joint movement will be lost in gangrene Check for reflexes. Usually you will check the knee jerk, which is L2, 3 and 4, and ankle jerk, which is S1 and S2. I included biceps and tricep reflexes if you are examining the upper limbs uh, for completion. Biceps reflex, C5, C6, C7, triceps reflex, C6, C7, C8. Then check for regional lymph node enlargement. Why? Because if you have infected ulcer or lymphoma, then there will be regional lymph node enlargement. Number two, capillary refilling test. And basically capillary refilling test we did it in the inspection and we do it in the palpation. What you do, using your fingers, you press on the skin of the big toe for two, three seconds. It, it will turn bell and then you release it. If the normal color retain in less than two seconds, that's a normal capillary filling test. If not, that's abnormal capillary filling test. After that, we palpate for all of the arteries in the body. And the idea is if your patient has peripheral arterial disease, there is a high chance that the other arteries in the body are affected too. So we need to check all the arteries in the body. This is how we check for the superficial temporal artery. This is how we check for the carotid pulse. Make sure you don't check for the carotid artery using both hands. Don't check both carotid arteries. Why? Because this may lead to vasovagal attack 
due to activation of baroreceptors in the carotid sinus and also decreasing blood supply to the to the brain so we do it just with one hand as shown in the picture this is how we take for the brachial pulse this is how we take for the radial pulse this is how we take for the femoral pulse and then we take for the popliteal pulse and posterior tibial pulse and lastly dorsalis pedis pulse and then you interpret your finding if there is no pulse this indicates occlusion obviously if there is expansible arterial pulsation this indicates aneurysm if there is firm tender artery this may indicate impulse in the artery if it's soft non tender and non pulsatile artery this indicates thrombus above the above the area that you checked and by doing this you complete your vascular examination thank you and good luck